Hello, everybody. My guest today is Sean Leonard. He's the CEO and co-founder of Active Demand, where he remains dedicated to helping businesses by way of implementing advanced online marketing strategies, marketing automation technology, and sales and marketing expertise that is simple, effective, and affordable. As an entrepreneur, Sean boasts more than 25 years of successful experience launching, owning, operating, and growing businesses, in addition to over 20 years of successful global sales and marketing experience in the industrial automation industry. Sean, are you ready to take us to the top? You betcha. All right. Active demand. What are you guys up to and how do you make money? What's your revenue model? Uh, So it's a SaaS model. It's a case that we, uh, it's a software as a service platform or marketing automation system. Uh, So it's a case that we sell subscriptions and uh, a little bit of services, not much. Most of the, most of the revenue is, is uh, pure software, software uh, subscriptions. Less than 10% professional service. Yes, definitely less than 10%. And is that kind of an onboarding fee or is it some other custom stuff you're doing? It's pure custom stuff. We don't charge onboarding fees. Uh, Quite often we have marketing agencies that are using the platform and uh, they end up doing a lot of the the services work for the the clients. And Sean, why mess around with professional services at all if it's not directly tied to retaining customers and increasing LTV? Um, it's a case that, uh, sometimes, uh, our agency clients end up being, uh, understaffed, right? So if there's a limiting factor with our clients not being able to execute instead of us, you know, saying, okay, well, good luck, go hire some folks. Uh, we've been, uh, uh, taking on some of the sort of white labeled agency services. And what are cust- you know, without going down every customer cohort, what's the average customer paying you per month? Would you say? Um, boy, that's a, that's a good one. I think it's a case that, um, yeah, I would say average customers probably 400 bucks a month. 400. Okay. And tell us what you do. What are they paying for? Um, so as far as the software, yeah. What are they uh, buying? Huh? What's active demand do? So active demand is a marketing automation system. So specifically it's used for, uh, 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 tracking prospects, attribution of uh, marketing activities, uh, executing marketing activities, uh, and really the what automation is, is the reuse of labor. So our system allows people to build a campaign once and reuse it. Uh, specifically, for example, a marketing agency might be focusing on dentists. So instead of them spending all their creative effort on one client, they would spend their effort, their creative effort on the vertical and reuse the labor across the fleet of clients. So our software enables them to uh, uh, reuse the labor. The second piece is, which is a big one, is um, the attribution. So it's a case that we put tracking scripts on, or our clients do, put tracking scripts on their website and we get full attribution on the entire journey. And uh, uh, we do things like call tracking to make the connection between the person who's buying or calling or filling out forms and the anonymous journey so that uh, they can get uh, journey attribution, if you will. Interesting. And put this on a timeline for us. When did you launch? Oh, boy. It was, uh, we started off as a marketing agency and we uh, pivoted. What year was that? Um, that we pivoted, it was 2000, uh, boy. 14. 15. When did the agency start though? Um, so we started doing agency services probably uh, 2010. And then I think we actually probably, yeah, it's probably 2010. We first started doing services for folks. And then you said software margins are better. It requires less work and it's recurring. Yeah. Well, actually the model we built, uh, because when we were an agency, we wanted to scale. And uh, the challenge we had as scaling as an agency was exactly what I just mentioned is how do we reuse labor? So from a agency perspective, uh, it's end all's law for, for, for parallelization. (laughs) You have to take a look at the stuff that isn't scalable and get rid of it. So that was one thing we did. And then the second thing we did is look, uh, gee, there's no tools built for those that market for many, So we brought the stack in-house and very quickly we said, gee, there's thousands of other agencies in the same boat as us. So we pivoted. Mm -hmm. And what have you scaled today in terms of total customers using the platform? Uh, uh, that's That's a difficult one as a large portion of our client base are agencies. So the agencies themselves have like, I think a large agency. But who pays you? Who pays you? The agency? agency. Okay, so the agency would be your customer. So how many agencies? Uh, We have... 
500 agencies. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, that's, that's fairly significant. So I want to talk more about how you got them. But first, can I take 500 agencies times that $400 average price point? You guys are doing about 200 grand a month right now. Um, that is uh, a segment of the businesses, the agencies, right? Uh-huh. So we do, um, uh, a big part of it is agencies, but we do sell the software as a service companies. We do have a couple of CRM vendors that are, uh, white labeling the platform as well. Okay. So it's a case that, uh, we, uh, the, the focus is agencies as far as a marketing perspective, but we do have, uh, business outside of the agency. So add those agencies plus C, plus other companies you sell to, it's must be like 600 or 550 or 700. What? Yeah. So I would say, um, well, we are a private company, so it's a case that those numbers are, are private. Uh, but I would say, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're under, yeah, definitely under 300,000 a month. Under th- No, no, sorry. I meant just the, okay. You would prefer to say that versus say the customer account number. That's correct. Okay. Got it. Fair enough. So you're between 200 grand uh, a month and 300 grand a month. And talk to me about growth a year ago. Where were you? Uh, yeah. So it's a case that we've been growing year over year, I would say on an average. So last year, what I'd say we grew 30% this year. 30%. Okay, great. And are you bootstrapped? Absolutely. That's great. Well, not anymore. Not, so the, we're bootstrapped as an agency, but now we are self-funded, if that's the question. No, no. You haven't raised like VC money or anything. No, it's all it's, yeah. yeah. You're in other words, you're using agency dollars to help fund the SaaS business. We did. We did. Uh, then we pivoted. Now it's, yeah. So we had, it's bootstrap. We are. So 30%, 30% year over year growth is pretty good. And if you're doing between 200 and 300 grand a month today, that means call it, you know, you're doing, doing between call it maybe, you know, 150 and 180 a month about a year ago. So where's most of that growth coming from new customers or expansion on your current base? Yeah. Uh, and it's, that is a really good question. Um, I would say, uh, a big part of the growth comes from expansion. Um, and the reason being is we have a low entry point, which is uh, agencies typically start with us with call tracking, which is a, we are, it's absolutely a loss leader for us. Uh, and uh, because we compete with lots of call tracking vendors and our money's on the stack, right? So it's a case that uh, we end up having a fairly uh, hefty expansion model. Walk me through acquisition. So beside our agencies, obviously your number one channel. And if so, how are you signing up additional agencies? That's a good question. I would say we have several strategies on the go. Um, partner webinars is, uh, has been a good one as we've I have a couple of, uh, uh, vendors that, uh, focus specifically on, on agencies. So we've been doing uh, partner webinars. That's one, a lot of content. Uh, we, we churn out a lot of content on our website, uh, social media dissemination of the content, paid advertisements specifically focusing on the call tracking piece. That's sort of the, uh, the thin edge of the, of the sword. That's so to an speak. expensive click. I mean, you look at call rail with 75 million raised dial. So, I mean, I can name a dozen companies in that space. How do you compete? It's, uh, um, we, well on the ads, definitely it's a difficult, we just focus on, uh, uh, competitive keywords, like for example, searching for call rail, searching for not the call tracking because it's, it's a, it's that, uh, yes, one, uh, the other one on SEO, we, we do fairly well on that as well. And, uh, there's several, um, like, uh, review platforms like, uh, G2 crowd and, uh, 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 yeah, the other review platforms, we end up getting a lot there too. Um, and as far as, other strategies for getting uh, agencies, uh, uh, we do um, a lot of, it's, you know, our platform's a personalization platform. I don't know if you've been to our website. Uh, we dynamically adapt our website to the buyer profile and the stage of the buyer journey in real time. And it's a case that, uh, so we do a lot of investigation as far as it's easy to, f- most agencies are not hiding right? They're spending a lot of time advertising or trying to make themselves known. So we have an active uh, uh, process of um, investigating, finding, doing the, uh, the reverse lookups and uh, pre-populating our database with the agencies. Then it's really, if we can get them to the website, the first time they see the website, the website is talking about exactly what we're going to do for them as an agency. Yep. So Sean, if you take all these strategies together, right? Weighted average, customer acquisition cost is what about? Oh, I don't know that number. 
Yeah, that's that's my CFO. My CFO would know that. I don't have that calculation. Well, how, how I mean, the CEO typically is the one that decides how aggressive you're going to be. So if this is a four hundred dollar per month customer, you're typically signing up. Are you willing to spend like all of Double first that. year ACV? Double that. Oh, so eight. You're willing to spend two months of revenue. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I mean that's not that aggressive. Uh, a lot of companes spend you know twelve months. Or bootstrap. <laughs> well, still you can you can you can you can have a twelve month payback period on a deferred basis, but on a cash yep. basis, pull it forward on an annual plan, and you still are fine as bootstrap company. Yes. End of the day is uh, uh, we are um, the finances come from us, so cash is is a. Uh, you don't pull it a, forward though. You don't sell annual plans. You only sell monthly. That's correct. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I can see where that would lead to you only being yeah. able to spend two months there. Um, no agencies will typically pay up front for an annual plan. Like I know that our competitors are selling annual plans, but uh, if you go look at any agency website, how many of them actually have marketing automation on their site? Very few, because they just can't afford it. But you just said some of your competitors are selling annual plans. Yes, but they are selling their clients. The agency clients are selling. So it's the always the prince, you know, the bridesmaid, never the uh, the bride. The agencies themselves don't end up having uh, the ability to buy for themselves. They're basically reselling the technology to their clients with our competitors. Yep. And so with us, it becomes infrastructure. And tell me about the team today. What's the team size? Um, we are less than 50. Okay, less than 50. And uh, where's everybody based? Um, so the majority of us are in Alberta here. Uh, we do have developers in, in the Ukraine. So it's, uh, it's a case that we do do some offshore development, but, uh, the major all of us are here in, uh, uh, as far as direct employees are here in Alberta. Any plan to raise cap uh, raise capital? Um, I think it's a case, uh, it is something that uh, we've talked about. Um, it isn't, uh, uh, we're just going through our fiscal year end is, is at the end of this month and we're doing our, uh, our meeting and meeting with the board and stuff. So we have a- uh, Wait, why is there a board if you're bootstrapped? Uh, it's a advisory board. It's not a, uh, it's not a- uh, I see. Yeah, it's an advisory board. So if you did decide to raise capital, again, we're making a big assumption here, but if you did decide to do so, how much would you raise? How much would you want to raise? Yeah, well, it's- uh, um, yeah, end of the day is, uh, till the decision to raise, if I could, if I could write a blank check, I could spend a million dollars right now. Right. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, until the decision is, is made. Um, yeah, we're, we're not, well, we're going off, we're going off the cuff here. This isn't a, we're not signing contracts here on the podcast. So if you raised a million bucks, you know, where you would spend that obviously to drive growth. Well, and again, we're talking ideal world here. What valuation would you raise that at? Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, I can't answer that. Well, what, what, what just go off? What would make you happy? I mean, this is nothing is contractual here. I'm just curious. Yeah, um, as far as valuation of the company. Yeah, so um, if you raise a million bucks on what six right, million pre money, eight million pre ten, fifteen, twenty. Um. Yeah, I would say ten million. Ten, and, and it's, I yeah. can tell you're thinking. The wheels are turning. Talk out loud, or you're doing math or something in your head. Yeah, well, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the uh, um, ARR and the lift on ARR as far as uh, uh, what I'd like to see, right? As opposed to, yeah. So it's I know typically the the, the valuation is some type of either lift on on uh, uh, customer base or uh, uh, or ARR or if it's a case that there's a missing piece that we provide uh, and they can see that it's a catalyst for their growth, that would be different. But I would say uh, any conversation that's uh, realistic is going to be on ARR. Yep, yep. Now, 10 million would obviously be a great valuation if you can go out and do that. If someone offered to buy the whole, com whole company for that price, would you sell for 10 million? Um, I would say that's a good question. <laughs> I would say- uh, uh, Are you married? Let me, let me simplify this, Sean. Are you married? I, I absolutely am. If you went home tonight <laughs> and said, "Hey, honey, I turned down a ten million dollar," does she kill you? It would be a it would be a tough it would be a tough sell. There's no doubt about it. Got it. Yeah, the reality is, for ten million dollars, we would absolutely sell. Uh, the exit the exit is uh, two pieces though. Is one is uh, is uh, is definitely a financial piece. Um, you know, I'm having fun right now. The, the the management team are having fun. We're 
we're uh, enjoying what we're doing. I think the painful the painful time is gone. You know, uh, the startup was, uh, as everybody has, is very very uh, stressful, and uh, I would say that uh, I don't think I'm ready to go through that again yep. anytime soon. Right. All right, Sean. Let's wrap up with the famous five quick answers. So your number one. What's your favorite business book? Um, it would be uh, uh, the um, Execution. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? That I'm following or studying? Uh, I would say that it was uh, uh, Musk, but he's sort of having a bit of a tough go in the past couple of days or week or so. <laughs> Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Yeah, it's probably uh, Google Analytics. They, they, Google's got a fantastic platform for anonymous data ag- aggregation. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, eight on average. <laughs> and you mentioned you're married. How many kids? Any kids? One kid. One, yeah. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 54. 54. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, that's a, that's also, you've got the good questions. Uh, I would say, um, yeah, if I could tell my 20, 20 year old self, it's, uh, a stop working for others, <laughs> right? It's taken me uh, quite a few years to to start this thing, and I spent a lot of time as, as an executive with other companies. And uh, yeah, the the right thing would have been back then is to, you know, do this. Guys, there you have it. Marketing automation company Active Demand launched in 2014. Sean Founder says he would have started earlier. Today, they're doing, call it, between 200 and 300 grand per month. Uh, that's up 30% year over year from last year. They're bootstrapped, serving between 500 and 1,000 customers that pay on average, call it 400 bucks per month. He's willing to spend up to two months of, uh, of value on acquisition. So call 800 bucks on acquisition, two month payback period. Team of 50 people in Alberta, Canada, and Ukraine building the company. Sean, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Yeah, no worries.